Hey guys, Richard Scallon, Remount Horsemanship, out here in North Carolina. I'm out here with this horse that I have in for training. Um, his main issue is trailer loading, and not necessarily tra trailer loading, but standing in the trailer and standing confidently and patiently. This guy, when I first got him, and in his owner's trailer, would paw and beat the living bejeebers out of a trailer. He had no confidence being inside a trailer. So what I've been working on, and has seemed to be working with, with Tony here, is not having him stand in the trailer. Not having him stand in the trailer, not having him, you know, face his fears. I'm scared to death of snakes. Um, I really dislike them. You're not gonna cause me to overcome my fear of snakes by putting me in a box and pouring a whole bunch of snakes on top of me and saying, deal with it. I might shut down and I might not move because I'm scared to death of them, but I'm not gonna become confident that way. The longer he stayed in that trailer, he would just beep, 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 pop, 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 pop. And I'm not about just to leave him in the trailer and beat the crap out of my trailer. So what I've been doing is I've been putting him on this big, long rope, okay? Because bottom line is he's not comfortable in the trailer. Bottom line is he's more comfortable um, with these other horses tied up behind me. He's more comfortable anywhere than the trailer. So I got this long line on him. And the, what I'm kind of dealing with here is I don't really care where he goes. But wherever he goes, if it's not in that trailer, he's gonna get some pressure. Anytime he looks at that trailer, there's no pressure or less pressure. So he's wanting to lock that camera from blocking that door. There's some entrance in the trailer. Give him all the rope he wants. He's not thinking the trailer. I'm kind of directing his nose, but I'm just not, I'm not really putting any specific pressure on him. I'm just putting pressure out there in the atmosphere. So he's thinking he wants to be everywhere. So I'm just going to put pressure everywhere until he decides, hey, I want the world to quiet down a little bit. So I'm going to head towards the trailer. He starts heading towards the trailer. That's when I get quiet. When I first started working with this, he would go in and then he would back right out. I would not try to keep him in the trailer. If he backed out, I'd say, hey, that's a good idea. Get out of that trailer. So I'd get him out of that trailer. I'd help him get out of that trailer. I'd say, come on, Tony Macaroni, let's get out of that trailer. Let's go. If you want to get out of that trailer, I'm going to help you get out of that trailer. Let's go. And then once he got out of the trailer, he would head down here, head down here to be with his buddies, and I'd let him go, and I'd let him go. And I'd just start putting pressure on him, pressure on him, pressure on him. There he's drifting, drifting. There, he comes back. So pressure, pressure, pressure. Thinking about the trailer, no pressure. Second, he's thinking outside of the trailer. That's when I start adding the pressure. I don't add the pressure inside the trailer. He wants off that trailer. I'm not going to keep him there. I'm going to say, cool, great idea. Let's get off the trailer. And then once he's off the trailer, then I'm going to add a bunch of noise and a bunch of pressure, not necessarily um, amounts of pressure. I can add a little bit of pressure to motivate a horse. It doesn't take a, a ton, but I will add pressure to him. So he starts thinking, man, I wanted to be over there. Well, there's a lot of pressure over there. Maybe I'll try over here. A lot of pressure over there. Man, this is no fun. Maybe I'll try over in this area. Oh man, there's a lot of pressure over there. But interestingly enough, as soon as I look at that trailer, as soon as I start heading towards that trailer, then that's where the pressure is released. When, I, when I'm teaching a horse a trailer load, and there's a time to load a horse, and there's a time to teach trailer loading. I've been teaching trailer loading. When I teach a horse tra to trailer load, I want that horse to see an open door of a trailer and say, man, that's where I want to be. That's the comfortable spot. That's where I want to head towards. Not the hitching rail, not uh, out there in the pasture running around with his buddies. I want him to be thinking about that trailer as the sweet spot, the best place to be. The reason I had this long line on him is because when I was backing him out to begin with, he would take off and I would let him drift. And I'd let him drift all 23 feet of this rope and let him go. And I'd help him, I, I would encourage him to go, 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 go. That's great, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, hit the end of the rope, oh. Now he's gotta turn and face that trailer. So I gave him plenty of time on that long rope. I 
gave him plenty of time on that long rope to really be uh, solidified in his idea, for him to really, really believe in his mind that he was, he was gone. He had a great idea and he was rolling with it. At the end of 23 feet, I'd shut him down, set down on the rope, have him face the trailer, add pressure, add pressure, and then as soon as he started heading towards the trailer, then that pressure would release. So I've heard people, and, I, and I've done it too, to a point, you know, loading the horse in the trailer and making him stand there. Um, that works with some horses, but some horses it definitely does not. I've heard people say, oh, I'd hobble a horse in a trailer. Well, I have no problem hobbling a horse and teaching them uh, to yield the pressure and not fight pressure, but that's not helping the mental anxiety of being in a trailer. You might hobble a horse inside a trailer to keep them from pawing. Yeah, sure, fine, you're gonna keep him from pawing, but his mind's still racing a million miles an hour. So you're just covering up the symptom of the true problem, which is that horse just not being comfortable inside that trailer. So playing this approach and retreat and allowing them to make the mistake and then correcting them and causing that trailer to be the sweet spot is how you're gonna cure your trailer confidence issues and your trailer loading issues. Now this horse here, I've been loading him up in the trailer. He gets anxious when the truck moves and then when you stop and he'll start pawing, 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 or he did. So I would load him in the trailer, get him standing calm, play that approach and retreat, get him to where he can stand like this in the trailer. And then there's a little roundabout right here. Then I would just simply jump in the truck, drive around the roundabout, park, he wanted to get off, say, yeah, buddy, let's go. Get him off, let him drift to the end of that rope, turn turn him around, pressure, pressure, pressure. As soon as you start thinking about the trailer, pressure off. And then I just got those drives a little bit longer and a little bit longer. I just got back from a 20 minute drive. Um, windows rolled down so I could hear if he was kicking at the trailer. He wasn't kicking at the trailer. He wasn't rocking the trailer. Got back after 20 minute drive. Did not get him out. I got out and I walked around. I made some noise so that he knew that the truck was stopped and he chose to stand quietly in that trailer until I got him off the trailer because that trailer became the sweet spot. So a little bit rambly there, but I hope that makes some sense to some of y'all with some of your trailering issues. Make the trailer the sweet spot. Don't cover up a symptom of the true problem by doing hobbles or anything like that. Cause that trailer to be the best place in the world for that horse and that horse just wants to be in that trailer. All right, thanks for watching. See y'all next time.